Hey, Mando, Philly Bounty Hunter, how you doing, buddy? So, uh, been wanting to talk to you since you recently released. I know you have a, a, a cape that's actual cloth instead of a plastic cape, but looks a little, a little boring. Doesn't have that cool capeness to it like, uh, this guy over here. Now, you see, that's a real cape. I think you need to switch it up, so, uh, why don't we do that real quick? Oh, now would you look at that? That is what I'm talking about. Now you have a cape that's freaking flapping in the damn wind. That's a thing of beauty right there. Oh yeah, and by the way, Daredevil 19 and his lovely fiance do have these capes in stock right now. Their contact information is in the description below. A thing of beauty. Be sure to check out Agil's Geeks for your figures and collectibles. This video and YouTube channel is rated PG-13, so that means this channel is not for anyone under the age of 13. So what is going on my fellow collectors? How is everybody doing today? Daredevil 18 here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Bandai Tamashii Nation's SH Figuarts The Mandalorian. So let's get into it right away and take a quick look. At the box. So as you can see, we do get a very basic style box when it comes to the SH Figure Arts Star Wars line. So we do get the window right there in the front of the box and on the window in gold to say Star Wars, The Mandalorian, and SH Figure Arts. On the bottom says The Mandalorian, Tamash Nations, and Bandai. And then here is the bottom of the box with the barcode of Blood Beetle Boston, which we here as well. And then here is the top of the box. And then the one side with the Tamash Nations quality sticker. The other side does have an image of the Mandalorian figure. Then the back does show some pretty cool poses. You can get the figure into along with some of the accessories, but anyway, that is the packaging. Let's get this figure open and take a closer look at one of the best and coolest Star Wars characters ever created. Alrighty, taking a closer detailed look, and this figure, I do like it, but there is some issues with the figure. One that's plainly obvious is he's way too clean looking, man. They, they needed to add a wash or, or something on the figure, man. Just way too clean. For Mando here, especially in this armored suit that he's wearing from episode one. Definitely too clean, but besides that, the sculpt and the paint do look really nice on the figure. It's like they did add a wash only in a couple spots. Besides that, the sculpt and paint detail definitely turned out pretty nice. The helmet looks a little too narrow, a little too small compared to the body of the figure. Hopefully with the best car armor, Mando, they do make this a little bit bigger because you could tell that the helmet's definitely way too small for the body there but regardless the figure still looks pretty dope man the head sculpt i think looks great nice clean paint for the black for the visor piece right there and just love the sculpt detail of it and i love the color uh silver that they chose for the helmet as well really nice looking added, they added a little bit of wash here and on the line over there so it kind of has a little bit of, of a weathered look but not too much you know what i mean but definitely looks dope. And then we do get his, his cape here. Plus to Tamashii Nations for giving us a cloth goods cape instead of a horrible plastic cape. My main issue with it, no wire at all. So disappointed with the cape. Even though they went in the right direction giving us a cloth cape, they just didn't give us any wire. So can't do anything with it. But if that doesn't bother you, then that that's definitely a, a plus for you. And I like the way it looks tucked into the armor on uh, the chest right there. And I do like the type of fabric they use. They kind of use like what me and my fiance use to make our Mando capes. And it, it does look nice and it has a nice like tattered look at the bottom. It's just... A boring cape, you know what I mean? But definitely better than the one we got with the Black Series figure. The armor on the torso looks pretty dope. There's a very subtle, like, black wash in these pieces over here, but that's really it. And then down on this sculpted line. And then that's really it for the torso with a weathered look to the figure, you know what I mean? I do like the, the battle damage to the armor right there. I think that looks dope. We do get the, the belt with the strap going across the torso and this piece I don't like at all which we'll go over during the accessories this pops out a lot it's just pegged in but once you articulate it a little bit it's gonna end up popping out as you can see it's not right now but it, it did lift up out of there as you can see so that does pop off a lot so be careful of that I think people are, are losing there so just be cautious when you articulate the figure but we do get a couple like small canisters there the buckle they painted silver and everything which looks pretty cool uh, the buckle here looks great. Some more canisters, some other type of things, bombs or something. We do get a pouch over there. 
the holster for his gun and then we get uh, some more silver paint on the back there we get that plate there some more of those canisters and stuff so the belt and the strap look pretty dope now the arms here the shoulder armor we get very little paintwork just like on the torso with that wash as you can see there i do like the the minor battle damage to it the other side looks pretty cool too with the battle damage as well and then we do get some nice sculpted wrinkles for his clothing underneath on the arm there gauntlets look dope and they added a little bit of a black wash on there not too much though which it looks good but they it's not on this side but it's on this side which is weird and then we do get the armor on these sides which are also on hinges to get sculpted wrinkles to his pants underneath some more battle damage on his thigh armor and they did add a little bit of that the line work with the black paint like how they've been adding it on the armor but it's so subtle you really can't see it too much but i do dig the silver for the uh the the battle damage there there's the back sculpted wrinkles on the pants we do get the the knee armor i guess in the lower legs we got more of those canisters on the right one nice sculpt detail to that there no wash or anything to the the clothing or the boots which is pretty disappointing the left one i like with the sculpted wrinkles we got a pouch over there some more sculpted wrinkles around the ankles on that one and then the feet look fine too the bottom of them we do get a little bit of sculpted treads down there so overall tomashi nations did a pretty good job with the figure just helmet definitely too small the cape is a bit boring with no bendy wire in it but right direction for them giving us cloth goods and then just the figure all around just looks way too clean especially for this character the mandalorian from the series the dudes always has like a dirty look to his armor you know what i mean so i wish they added more of like a, a wash or something to the figure but besides that figure does look pretty damn dope but anyway let's continue on and for anybody curious yes you can definitely swap out the original cape with a more better wired cloth cape this one i literally just ripped it out as you can see it ripped here it looks like it might have been a little bit glued on there i just ripped mine off and it came right off simple as that for anybody who's curious if you could swap his original cape with a wired cape all right continuing on moving on to the accessories mando here is included with a pretty good amount of things so what we do get we do get his rifle then we do get his hand blaster and then we do get two interchangeable holsters one with the blaster in it and then one without and then we do get an extra peg and then we do get an interchangeable middle part of the barrel for the rifle which is meant for him to be able to holster the rifle so for the smaller blaster here they did a really nice job with the sculpt and paint detail all throughout it very nice paintwork and clean paintwork and the sculpt of it looks pretty dope too so we do get the hand blaster then we do get the two different holsters one with and one without the blaster in it and very nice sculpt and paint detail on the blaster on that one and whichever one you have on the figure you have to put this strap on it so it doesn't look like it's missing something like this one and it's not too difficult swapping it i did have an issue with mine which i will go over shortly then we do get the rifle here which is definitely my favorite accessory out of everything this thing turned out great man very clean crisp paintwork all throughout it and excellent sculpt detail on it as well really dig the way this turned out here very cool looking and then you can interchange the piece with the scope on it there's the interchangeable piece and this is just meant so you can holster his uh his rifle there which i will show you how to do that along with the handgun or hand blaster right now quickly all right so before i show you the guns and how to use them there is this little extra peg now this is meant for if you don't want to have the strap on here to holster the rifle all you would do is just peg this in like so to cover up the peg hole but you still need to be careful because as you can see it just popped out so you you don't want to lose that piece it might be better off just leaving the hole in there now to swap the gun holster here you have to be careful with this because when i swapped mine for the first time and went to put a different the other one on it this piece that holds the holster on the hinge it did pop out of the figure and i did have to crazy glue it back on so just be cautious of that they're just pegged in on each side so you kind of have to pull it out and it should just pop right out so you do that don't forget to take the strap piece off as well because you have to put it on the gun holster here here we go and then 
all you would do is just pop this right whoops that right back on like that and then there you go as simple as that like I said just be cautious when doing that you don't want that piece popping off and then losing it I thought I lost it when it popped off but luckily enough I was able to find it now for the rifle here you will need this piece in let me show you how to holster the rifle which is just a huge pain in the ass actually so you need this part on here so you take the barrel off and then the back piece or the the handle type part I forgot what it's called exactly peg that in there is one extremely annoying issue that I'm noticing a bunch of people are having with this accessory here so you peg that on right now it's staying on but it likes to pop right off there's also another piece right here and you have to unpeg that be careful not to lose it you unpeg that right so I did swap and put a custom cape on it but they have a little slit in there and that's meant for this piece to go in there like that because it does peg on the bottom of his belt and it would go on like that I'm just gonna move the cape to the side here now this you would peg into the bottom and the peg on this just looks like it's gonna break and that's how it looked fresh out of the packaging but that does peg see there goes the barrel pop right off you do peg that in damn that barrel and a lot of people are having that issue with that and this I believe you just peg in this way and then there you go that's how you would holster it but like I said this one issue that I'm having is that that constantly falls the hell out they didn't make the peg hole I guess small enough and it just it, it like springs out you see what I mean that's an annoying damn issue right there it just it's so irritating <laughs> it's like why oh man so that is an issue I feel like a lot of people are having uh, with this figure here it just doesn't even want to stay in on mine but that is how you holster uh, the rifle there which it looks fine once you have it on there but this does not want to stay in damn you it's also very annoying having the rifle holstered and trying to pose the figure around because everything pops apart as I mentioned this keeps falling off this keeps unpegging even where it pegs into the gun at the top unpegs as well so it's very irritating trying to pose around the figure while you have that rifle holstered it's like they did too much to have you holster the rifle and just over complicating it you know what I mean so we do get all that stuff and then we finally get nine alternate hands and starting on the top right here we do get a pair of fists of course which do come on the figure out of the packaging then we do get a pair of open resting type hands we do get a pair of open splayed out type hands then we do get this right trigger finger hand and then a left gripping hand and both these hands are meant for the rifle then we do get another right trigger finger hand but this one is meant for the hand blaster as you can see the difference between the two they are sculpted or molded differently but then if you look at the peg hole for the wrist joint this one's angled so you know that is definitely meant for the rifle why this one is not and we do get some excellent sculpt and paint detail throughout all nine hands and they are also very simple to swap out and that's always good things you want to risk breaking a wrist joint on your Mandalorian figure but anyway, that is all the accessories included with the Mandalorian. Let's keep moving on with the rest of the review, shall we? Now, for the height of the Mandalorian to the very top of his helmet, it looks like he stands around 6 inches tall. And then here he is compared to the ESH Figuarts Revenge of the Sith Master Yoda. And then we do have a custom 112 scale, the Child. Then we do have the Black Series, the Child, and the Carbonite version, Mando. And then we do have the Black Series, Cara Dune and IG-11. And as you can see, Mando here does scale pretty well with the Black Series line. Of course, he scales well with figure arts, but you can definitely have him work well with your Black Series figures. And as you can see, the helmet size for the Black Series Mando is much better compared to the figure arts one. And then here he is compared to the Mafex BB-8, the SH Figure Arts R2, the SH Figure Arts version 2 Darth Vader. In the Black Series Ahsoka and Captain Rex. And I think Mando scales really well with all these figures here. And then here he is compared to the Black Series Dewback and Sand Trooper. And I think Mando scales awesomely with both these figures here. And then here he is compared to the Storm Collectible Sector, the Marvel Legends Retro Series Deadpool, the Mefex Justice League Batman, and the Figma Black Swordsman Guts. 
Binary is compared to the SH Figure Arts Awaken Warrior Super Saiyan Goku and the Mezco 112 Deadpool. Anyway, there's some quick comparisons. Let's keep moving on with the rest of the review. So now for the articulation, Mando here does have some pretty good movement. So we do have two joints at the neck with both joints. You can get Mando to look up. Pretty good amount actually, so nice upward movement. Looking down, his helmet is going to bang into his armor, so you could have him look down either that much or tuck the helmet, but the cape does get in the way, so looks up and down pretty good. You do get pivot at both joints, the lower neck, whoops, ripped the head entirely off. That piece fell off as well. Then you do get much better pivot at the upper neck, and then it does swivel at both joints as well. So you do get some pretty good movement at both the neck joints there. Then we do get a point of articulation at the torso and the waist there. So at both joints, doesn't really crunch forward at all, so that is pretty disappointing. Goes back a little bit better as you can see. Not the best pivot, but it's, it's all right. And then we do get swivel at both those joints as well. Then the shoulder pad pieces or the armor are on a hinge and then they're also on a ball peg so you can move them all around, which is definitely cool. You get a very nice circular motion out of the shoulder there. And then the arms do go out to the sides, about 90 degrees, which is definitely good. They do go up and down. We do have true bicep swivel, but it is super duper tight on this figure. And then we do have the double jointed elbows that do bend in pretty much all the way. So that's definitely dope. No swivel at the gauntlets, which kind of does suck. But I mean, he doesn't have a flame effect for his, uh, his flamethrower, so I guess really not that big of a deal. Then we do have a ball hinge on the wrist, so it does swivel. And then you also get a little extra movement at the ball peg that connects into the wrist, which is dope. Then we do get the hinge as well. And then for the legs here, this is a newer type of drop-down leg joint that I've seen for the first time, which is pretty cool, as you can see at the hip swivel. It drops down a little bit, and I thought I had a QC issue with my figure, but then I realized it's a drop-down leg joint, which is dope. So you can get Mando to kick forward about 90 degrees. Doesn't go to the back too much. Let's see if he can. Then, damn it here. And these pieces do hinge up and down the armor piece and then uh, the, the holster for the gun as well. And Mando can almost van, damn it. So not... Bad leg movement with the Mandalorian here. Then we do get a very nice hip swivel there. We do have the double jointed knees that do bend back a bit more than 90 degrees. Then for the ankles, they do swivel. They don't hinge up too much. The, the, the boot around the ankle does get in the way, so it really can't hinge up too far. Hinges down much better. And then you get a really nice ankle pivot with Mando here. And then we do have a nice toe hinge as well so overall the articulation for the most part is good i do wish the torso had some better movement but you're gonna be able to get mando here in some pretty cool bounty hunter like poses and i'm about to show you some of those poses right about now but anyway that is my review of the sh fig yards the mandalorian hope you enjoyed it if i had to rate this figure with detail i'd give it an even seven articulation i'd give it an even nine accessories i'd give it a 7.5 and then the overall quality i would give a 7.5 if you would like to know the price and where to buy this figure i did get mine from ageless geeks so you can check over at their website at agelessgeeks.com and when you check out use code name daredevil and you will get yourself a bit of a discount if you can't find something on their website i do highly recommend going through their instagram or facebook page i will put more information in the description below and if you would like to support the channel don't forget to subscribe and click on that notification bell and if you liked it feel free to give it a thumbs up if you didn't like it Oh well, I guess you didn't like it, but thanks for watching, I will see you later! Let's get this figure open to take a closer look at one of the best and 
Nicholas Star Wars character, why we ya? Let's get this figure but to take a closer look. Let's get this figure but to take a closer look at one of the best and coolest Star Wars character, but ya. <laughs> Damn it. So now for the articulation, and Mando here does have some pretty good movement, so we do... The ESH Figure Arts Revenge of the... This one's on an angle, so you can definitely tell it's for the revolver. This one, revolver. God damn it, it's a rifle, you bastard.